All right. Here we go live. So, um, welcome everyone to Meshri Development Meeting. Um, today is the thirtieth of August, Wednesday. I'll quickly share the link in chat. Make sure you mark your attendance, and uh, we'll be missing out a couple of folks, or they will be joining halfway through. So I've shared the meeting minutes in chat. Make sure you mark your attendance. All right. So uh, with that, um, we'll be starting off with our weekly tradition to welcome newcomers. So if you are joining this call for the first time and haven't introduced yet to this community, so this is a chance you can unmute yourself and give a quick introduction and say hi. So I see one new participant in today's oh, list. Yeah, so uh, I'm a newcomer in here. So my name is Ni. Uh, I'm from uh, Florida in the US. And I'm still a computer science in the uh, University of South Florida. And uh, it's very really nice to meet you guys. And uh, hopefully I can contribute with like, some uh, meaningful for the project. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so, so nice to have you, uh, Ni. I'm not pronouncing it uh, right. Yep, yep, it's new. Yep, yep. Okay. That's right. Yep. All right. Cool. Uh, welcome to the community. All right. So I don't see anyone else who is joining for the first time other than uh, Swastik. Uh, Swastik, is this your first time joining this call? All right. Uh, if you got any issues with your microphone, uh, make sure you drop an introduction and say hi in the chat. So a couple of uh, more folks have joined. So Mohammed Heather. So hi, uh, Mohammed. Welcome to the call. Um, would like to say hi to the community and hi. and give a bit introduction about yourself. So I'm Mohammed Heather. I am currently in Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi, in fourth year. And I am I'm learning about uh, Docker and Kubernetes. I am learning uh, especially microservices. So just to expand my knowledge, I have a strong knowledge about Munstack. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's cool. Um, nice to have you. And welcome to the community. Thank you. All right. Make sure you all uh, mark your attendance. I'll share the meeting minutes again in chat. All right. So am I missing anyone else who is joining this call for the first time and haven't introduced yet? I'll pause for five more seconds. Uh, hi. Um, I'm a software engineering student in my fourth year from Zambia. I'm looking forward to learning more about Meshri. All right. Cool. Um, thanks for joining today's call, Akibu. Okay, so I don't see anyone else who is joining for the first time and haven't said hi. So with that, uh, let's uh, start with first item that's from Yana on show current adapter, show current status of deployment or undeployment for adapters. So Yana is with us. So Yana would like to share your screen. Yes, yes, I'm sharing. So currently you can see the, there is nothing uh, that can be displayed on the chip uh, that can show the status of adapter uh, that is running. So I have added, uh, you can see it here in the chip, uh, some uh, uh, icon type thing uh, that can show the current status of uh, an adapter. Uh, suppose if you have uh, undeployed it. So while I'm deploying, it will change its colors to uh, uh, orange. And once it is undeployed, it will change it to red. And suppose if you will deploy it again. 
uh, then while deploying it will change to uh, yellow and uh, once it is deployed it will change uh, its color to uh, green so uh, this is the issue also i want to uh, get a confirmation that uh, the adapter that will displaying on the screen uh, are the adapter that we have uh, that are already deployed or not um yeah the adapter that we see over here um if you just go back yeah, yeah. so the list over that comes over here uh, these are the adapters that are uh, not already deployed so um, that's how the list shows this uh, does the snack does the toaster noti notification also changes the color i missed that update uh, if you deploy again or Oh okay yeah got it. So okay. So now yeah, uh, uh, I have taken uh, taken a presumption that once uh, if a deployed is already uh, uh shown on on the chip so uh, it is uh, deployed so I will change it and another thing is that uh, uh, are some of these adapters are deployed or uh, Are already deployed, uh, or we have uh, we always need to deploy these adapters. Um, uh, anybody else want to answer Yana's question? Yeah, Maybe, no, I think uh, Aditya or Yash. Yeah, so I think uh, they are not already deployed. And uh, like, if you run your server, they are like already not deployed. You need to manually deploy them. uh the thing is that if you are seeing the list over here that mean you can ping them and you can easily like uh deploy them although the ui that you are seeing is kind of not that great that uh, can be enhanced in a way so that user can know that these are the list of the uh, adapter that can be deployed easily or you can ping them so yeah that part also need a work uh, we will create a issue for that we need a mock up but yeah i think Uh, thing you Actually, did is uh, great. I was said that I have to use. Uh, currently, it is not here. Use the uh, the icon that is being displayed here. Um, Ayana, are you talking about uh, that green dot that we had on the uh, Kubernetes context yeah, feature? Yeah. Yeah. Now it is not there, but. Uh, uh, Yeah, it uh, it should be there. Uh, when when it's active, it should be there. Uh, the same thing that you have done over here. Yeah, so and I this might say... not be visible on uh, Zoom also. So, but uh, that green uh, dot had uh, have animation, right? Yeah, I think it has. Yeah, so I think okay. Uh, I will work on it. All right. Anyone has quick uh, any more questions or thoughts for Yana? All right. Um. Thanks, Yana. And uh, one more thing, you could point um the toast notification that you are showing. Uh, make sure you are using the new approach that we are following to send all these notifications to the notification center. So now NQ snack bar is uh, not being used. So notify. Thing is used. Okay, okay. Thank you. I'm stopping the screen share. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Anna, for the update. So next up, we have an update from Yash on fixed type errors. Yash would like to share. Yeah, sure. Let's like share. Just a second. Okay. So, what was the issue? So, whenever you what what we do when we build a UI of the when we build the machine UI. So, when we build the machine UI, we use the next export to build the UI. 
so whenever we are building the ui there is a small error warning error is coming the type error i cannot show you right now because my server was not running but there was a type error was coming uh, the error was saying that you need because there is a publish schema that we use so if you are new to this uh, meeting let me tell you what this publish schema mean this is a rgsf schema rgsf schema help us to like uh, create a form on the uh, uh, in the machine so if you go on designs and if you open any form uh, let's say if you open the publish model form that publish model form is made with the rgsf is made this this particular is made with the rgsf and for this this is the schema that is written and that is this schema written in the mishri ui and in this schema this is the api that we are using to update one field for items so what because of this because of that next js giving us the error because when we use the next export to uh, compile the next uh, next bundle it gives uh, it gives error because uh, it disables the api routes or middleware that's why it is always giving error so what i did over here is that i removed this schema and moved it to the mesh kit so mesh kit is the place where we store all the schemas so if you are creating any new schema rgsf schema for any kind of form or creating any form you should go to the mesh kit and create a pr for that and you can raise pr and uh, uh, add the schema over here so because of this uh, that error is also removed and uh, we will also get the best practice that we we are moving our all schemas from ui to the mesh kit so this is the schema you can check out uh, i already added the link in the dev me meeting minutes so this is the schema that i added in the mesh kit so this solves the this solves the type error problem and also uh, uses the best practices so any comment on this or any question Yeah, um, okay. I don't have a uh, anyone else who was saying. All right. Um. Yeah, I don't have a specific uh comment, but yeah, we'll be using um like different schemas uh for all the models, or like we'll be fetching from that. We will be using a uh, different schema for different model, and for different model, we need to create a new schema, RGSF schema. and that rgsf schema need to be in the mesh kit and from mesh kit you can easily fetch Wait, that it, with yeah. an yeah, with an api and you can use it in the ui part so yeah if you are interested in that particular area we are kind of there are so many other models that need to be converted in the rgsf this is the model that you are saying is a rgsf for rgsf become is made with the rgsf schema and there are other models that need to be converted to so you can like uh, volunteer that on on that particular area so if you interested you can ping me in the slack channel any public channel yeah. so this is an update from my side today all right and since you're on um yeah okay good so thanks for your update yash i'll quickly share my screen again so let's view next update from akibu on context uh gate switcher fix okay uh let me share my screen mm uh could you just allow me to share my screen oh yeah sure um Bye. you can uh so my server is not currently running due to the fact that i just got back so i didn't have time to load my server um okay so this is the issue that we are having um so as you can see when you click, click on the ks logo the drop down comes down but when you click on the notification nothing happens however when i was going to the whole thing i did run the mesh server and the ui server on the ui server everything works perfectly but on the mesh server that's where the problem is so i actually have been trying to get some help on how i can uh, 
fix the two. So uh, on the Meshri server and on the UI server, both of them are working. So if um, anyone has any tips on how I can go about that, I would really appreciate it. Okay, so let me summarize. I think you are trying to say that in that on if we are if you are running a UI server on three thousand port, that particular thing is all like working. If you click on the a notification, it is working. It is like uh, sliding down the U uh, case switcher. But in nine zero eight one port, the server that we run usually the build server, it it was not working on that, right? Yes. Yes. So I think uh, this should be the UI issue. Have you figured out like it can be the issue of event propagation? Maybe uh, have you checked that? Um, I did, but then I wasn't too sure on how it was um, because it's basically one module. Uh, see if I can just share that. Uh, okay, so this is the module. So this is the particular module where uh, um, sorry to interrupt, uh, Akibu, in. yeah. but I think there's yes. some issue with your screen here. Yeah, you might, uh, you'll ah. require to reshare. All right, let me just do that. And then... okay. okay, so this is the file where I'm supposed to actually make the changes. And I was going through it, but then I'm still not sure on how I can make it work on both ports. Okay, so uh, Akibu, let's uh, uh, let's connect for more for this more in the Slack channel. But for now, I I think this can be the issue of the event propagation. And if you check that that event is properly like propagating, if that is not the problem, then I think that can be other issue. Uh, if that is the problem, you, you can try fixing that. And if that fixes, you can build a UI for that. And it can it should work on the 9081 port. If not, what let's connect on the selection. All right, let me try that and then I'll uh, get back to you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that was what I had. All right. Um, thanks, Akibu. And okay. So Sudanshu, so you're up next with an update on standard toolbar. Yes. Okay, so like uh, after like cloud, uh, like I uh, performed the standard toolbar and uh, machine UI. So all this will be a standard tool for uh, every like configuration, des uh, like design applications everywhere we are tools we are using basically. And I've also made the uh, like decent data tables which we are using uh, more flexible. So it will be a responsive data table which will be uh, fetching from a single directory to every directory. Because uh, right now what we were doing that we were uh, using or uh, like uh, defining the data tables each and every page. So I have consolidated that and using a single data table and which will be using as a reusable component. And from that only, uh, we will having that a reusable, like reusable toolbar or a standard toolbar. Uh, nothing uh, special, uh, like no to take it, but yeah, it works like that. Some color enhancements are required. Otherwise it looks like this. Is, is this the same reusable component, like a reusable table that we use in cloud? Yeah, that data table we use in cloud, uh, use a, like uh, responsive data table if you know, yeah. okay. from a single page, use it, that's, but right now main machine UI, we were defining in each and every page. So yeah, no, no, I just wanted to make sure that we have the same component that we have in cloud. Yeah, I've done that only, we have the same component. Okay, sure, sure. All right. Yeah, this looks good. So this will, uh, like we are using MUI Datable in many places in Meshi UI. So this will be following over configurations, application design, filters, and performance. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, um, anyone else has quick comments or questions for Sudanshu before we move to next item? <laughs> I was just asking, like, I just saw the issue of radius. If you, I previously like mentioned that issue, particular issue. If you could share again, so then you, let's.
like if you can see the on the left corner on the left of corner of the data table uh, like there is no uh, radius like yeah top one in the left for in the left top corner of data table yes this one this highlighted one checks yeah this one so you can see that there is like don't check that just click on and check yeah so if you can see the radius of that uh, border it kind of sharp but on the other radiuses of the data table are kind of round yeah also like, let's say if uh, that if uh, if the data table like expand or kind of collapse with the responsive net does that particular toolbar also do that like toolbar is the width of toolbar is the width of with the width of table that's what i'm trying to ask if you make it responsive uh, sudanshu okay Thank you for coming. Okay, at that border, it is. I'll check that. And since you are like uh, on this, and you are moving to global components for datables, uh, one more thing that we should be consistent with, uh, like showing these carrots or like not showing this because we will be making the row clickable. Yeah. Arrow icons, right? Yeah. Okay, All right. Cool. Thanks, Shudanshu. So let's move to next item. That's from Antonin on Assistant, the design system for Mishri. So um, let me go ahead and I can share real quick or. All right, so um, right now we have a new repo for the, the design system. Um, it's something that we, we've been looking to create for some time, and um, Lee had uh, put in a, um, a I forgot, um, an internship looking for people to contribute. And um, so now we're a little bit uh, fast tracking just a little bit. So right now with the, the way the, the repo is just set up with the uh, yarn and um, we have two different packages, one for the SVG icons and then another one for the components. Um, at the moment, the components all wrap the, the movie library. So basically you don't have to set up the extra libraries as normal whenever you set up the material UI, you just use this component library and then just uh, import the component that you actually need. And the SVG icons we have about at the most um, 50 maybe, uh, 60 and counting, um, at this time, the, the, re the releases are not um, automated. So I'm working on that. And we have some open issues. Uh, I only have one at the moment that is just a uh, friendly, um, good first issue. And, but we're working through to add more personality to it. The, uh, one for utilities and one for a custom hooks. Um, but we actually do need that from all of the, the repos that we have that have like a replicated code and it would be a lot easier just to put that into a particular library and then just call it from there. And um, so at this time, I just wanted to point out that we do have this new repo and I know that we still have a couple of things that are not exactly updated, but I do have the make file and the readme that will be updated to reflect what are some things that you can do to get started. Uh, at this time, whenever you do want to demo, you use the, uh, the storybook. Uh, but as I mentioned before, the um, 
the packages are not exactly published, so you really can't see the latest change changes unless you um, unless you create something on your own to to test it yourself. But in the meantime, we'll get all that uh, fit and um, get it more um, user friendly. So I would like to call out if anybody would like to contribute. You know, you're welcome to. You can open new issues. You can you know, do, do whatever that you think that uh, we can do to improve this. And this is just for the, the repo itself. This is not um, pertaining to the, the design system in Figma, which we already have um, two open issues, one for the, the website and one for the design system. And so any changes that we need to make from the, the uh, Figma, um, that would be a little bit separate. You just create the open issue, make the changes in Figma, and then we'll try to replicate that in the uh, the repo. But as I mentioned, most of this is a little bit manual. So once we get all that done, um, we'll be able to uh, do more releases and be able to use it in the, the current repos. Anybody have any uh, questions, um, insight? Um, I have uh, one quick question. Uh, I remember Lee commented on um, something on Slack regarding the SVGs. So uh, are we passing all the standard uh, props, uh, height, fill, color, and width uh, on all these SVGs or like how's the system going over there? Sure, um, let me check again. Yeah. Okay, so right now, I do have an open issue to uh, to define the default uh, styling. Um, one of the things I'm trying to do is create a uh, a theme provider that uh, attach the uh, the movie. Uh, I'm sorry, material material UI, and so you don't have to set it up yourself. Um, it just be a default styling um, that would be across all the SVG icons and all of the components that we'd be using, and so. For the SVG icon, right now they are, um, they just have the default props right here for width, height. Um, it is ascending the, let me look for it. Uh, where is it? Uh, It's ascending the uh, the SVG element, so you um, however you use it before, it will still be the same. The only difference is that I removed some of the extra that I had before, so right now it's just ascending the uh, SVG element. But um, if you want to customize it or anything like that, I have an open, not PR, um, a branch. Uh, where I put it. I think I have a, right, there we go. Oh, so I did put one. Um, so here's an idea of what it would look like if we have an icon that is uh, default with the color, uh, black, whatever the default, and another one with the, uh, with the, the green, uh, couple, pair of green, green, whichever one. Um, so I already have this, but the naming kind of, I have a problem with naming things. So for right now, it's just, a, uh, just for you to see that, okay, you have one that's the default, one with the, the colors, one that is outlined, and then you export it, and then we call it from here. So that reduced some of the customization that we're doing in MeshMap and uh, MeshV UI and also MeshV Mesh Cloud. So um, that's how that's done. I'm hoping to get this in I'm hoping to, to do the rest of them, but I need to go back and check all of the icons that um, that we that we customized and added that way. So uh, keep in mind that the, the names will be changed. I might not name it exactly that, but because everybody know what color they are, so it may it may be just that a uh, couple. So, um, but that's how it is right now. Um, like I said, I'm I'm open to you know suggesting to to make any changes or anything like that. But um, yeah, just let me know.
Yeah, yeah, that yeah, makes and, uh, sense. Yeah, and I, I will be adding uh, the original SVG files. Uh, some of them I can't find in the, the message UI. So I have another uh, uh, branch that I'm working on to add that on there. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to put it in the, the directory itself or just put it in the asset uh, directory and just call it from there. So whichever one, but it's in the work. So. Yeah, all right. And uh, we do have a couple of uh, UXs also on the call and uh, regarding the colors and uh, the parts, uh, Rithik, do you have any comments or anyone else? about the namings and I think you already have a list uh, written down for all the names. Yeah, we have a, a names in the mail sigma file for the names. So like, we can refer it from that file. And, uh, I'll share the link so that everyone should know where we are keeping the colors. All right. Um, thanks, Antonet. And yeah, um, any volunteers for all those open issues and all all the things that Anton said? You can raise your hand now or signal in chat or just comment on the issue. Let's get you assigned. Lots of uh, good things to be done over there. All right, Alvin raised his hand, so cool. Okay, so next up we have an item from uh, Uzair. Um, but Uzair uh, is not with us. So let's uh, skip and move to next item. That's from Suhail on Meshi CTL, ensuring that Meshi CTL system check works perfectly. All right. Suhail would like to share and give a bit context about it. Yeah, so currently, uh, there is a command to check uh, the machinery health check uh, with respect to whether machinery is running or not and with our operators. So, so uh, currently the ask is asked for it is to run the system health check to, uh, before every uh, sub command. So in this PR, I have added a hook that will, uh, in the parent command, such that it will check whether the machine server is currently up and running and all the environment ready. Really nice. So, uh, respectively, I give the error. Uh, uh, it keeps enhancement uh, with respect to unit test and integration. Test will like the failing currently because the output. Um, there's a lot of uh, lots of feedback um, from your microphone as well but yeah so um uh, do you have it uh, happen to have it uh, running or any test that you could show um, over here and um, I don't have much context on uh, Meshi's CTL, but um, I see Husayna is with us and she has like worked a lot on me in this area. So uh, Husayna, uh, by chance, uh, did you uh, review this PR or you have any quick comments for Suhail? Uh, I'll have to review it and give comments. I'll take a look. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, that will be helpful. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. So uh, anything else from you? Or you would like to, uh, or you was saying something else? Yeah, that, yeah that's it. Like unit test and integration tests are feeling in my PR, so I have to keep it. Because output has changed. All right, um, thank you, Suhail. I'll share my screen again. All right, so, um, Next up is an item from Philip again on Meshri CTL. So do we have Philip with us? Okay, uh, Philip is not with us today, so we'll be skipping his item. And next item is from Vikram. So uh, this month we recently announced the badges program, uh, the layer five recognition program. 
So Vikram has few highlights related to that. So Vikram would like to present. Yes, please. Yes, so we have recently launched a new system for recognizing our contributors, and that is the Layer 5 Recognition Program. Uh, this is open for all. It does not depend whether you are an experienced contributor or just a new a newcomer who is, start, who is just getting started in domestic. So we recently have, uh, so this program will award you the badges which, you, which will be available on your Messy Cloud platform, on your user profile, and which you can even share on Twitter, flex it on LinkedIn, or probably ping someone on Facebook, or embed the code in your own portfolio website, or even on your GitHub profile. And so primarily these badges are divided into two types. One is the achievement badges and another is the project badges. Achievement badges are awarded uh, by the system uh, by default when you complete a specific task. For example, bring a buddy. This badge will be awarded when you have invited someone to layer five cloud and for sharing and caring. We have a lot of badges for the, which are termed under the achievement badges. And the second one is the project badges, which are awarded to the contributors who have consistently contributed on a on a project. So we have UI, US, mesh map. It does not depend that whether you are technical person or more inclined towards the documentation part or UI, US. We have something for everyone. So we have these cool, these fancy cool looking badges will be available on your Mixi Cloud platform profile and which will, which is easy to share everywhere. And also, we also have a new proposal that if you feel that we are missing an area where we should award badges to contributors, or you feel that some of the badges need to be redesigned, you can raise a new topic at discuss.layer5.io and we will definitely hear from you. That's it. All right. Uh, you might also want to share the recent post about badges program that's on Discuss Forum. Uh, yes. I'll share the link. All right. All right. So anybody else has quick comments or um, thoughts for this badges program? Vikram has shared like how you can earn a badge and um, yes, yes. we have a blog post also written on this badge. I hope um, Vikram, Saurav or anyone else will be sharing that in chat too. So uh, Rithik, uh, I think you were saying something. Yeah, I was just, I was saying like we have functionality to allow user to share their badge on social media and also on their profile. So. Like if you if Vikram, you can go to your special cloud profiles. Oh. Yeah, okay. So here we have an embed code button. So when you click over it, so like we gave a template so that so that users can use and embed that code inside there, whether it's in on their web portfolio website or on their readme file on GitHubs, like this. So this is how you can also use and embed code on their profile and show people that you or what you have achieved. All right. Cool. Um, thanks, Vikram, uh, for giving us a quick highlights on badges program. Okay. I'll share my screen again. Yes, thank you. Okay, so next up we have an update from Rajdeep. So Rajdeep is uh, being uh, busy with working on a couple of UI updates. So Rajdeep, yep. would you like to share? Yes, sure. So yeah, am I screen, my screen is visible? Uh, yep, your screen is visible. And a quick note for everyone, like uh, you don't have to ask uh, for your screen is visible. And yeah, just a side note. Okay, so uh, mainly I, I was working in the uh, process of like from flash based components. I'm moving the components to like functional components. So in the process, in the last week, I have like moved the custom toolbar select JS and the 
custom table footer, these two components, and also another PR about like all the download notifications are like info notifications now, like previously it was success notification. So now it's info notification. So these three PRs from my side and this week, and I'm working on the dashboard to make it from class component to functional. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, that was a uh, quick. Uh, do you happen to have uh, your UI running? So I know like uh, these are quick small updates, but for others context, uh, that would be much helpful. And right now it's not running like for like the UI UX is not ch changed that much because it's like mm. from uh, class based component to function, yeah. it all looks same. Only the download part is from success to info. That's okay. all changed right now. It's like the UI is not running. Okay. Yeah. No issues. And uh, since you are on that topic from uh, class based mm -hmm. component to uh, function based components. So I think uh, mm -hmm. there is a uh, lots of more open issues or uh, if they're not, uh, there should be open issues on this thing. And it could be turned into a uh, good first issues that uh, someone can pick up to convert the class based mm -hmm. components to function based components. So make sure uh, mm -hmm. uh, you list them all in a separate issues, make sub sub issues mm -hmm. for that and uh, let's an assign it to others. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, thanks, Ardeep. Okay. Anybody has quick questions, comments or feedback before we move to next item? Nope. All right. So next update um, is from WebUp on email job failure. So Web would like to share and uh, give a context uh, what this email job failure is and how you're fixing it. All right. So just a second. Okay. So the email job failure is about the build and release workflow. Like uh, if there is a failure in the build and release workflow, we want the GitHub Actions to email us the uh, um, email. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, Weber. Um, I think your screen, you're sharing, but it's um, black. Is it just for me or for everyone else? It is, it is not visible for me. Okay. Okay, okay. You I'll might want to reshare, yeah. Uh, is it is it the now? Um, nope. Uh, not yeah. for me. Yeah, if you could uh, share a link, uh, I'll share. I guess I'll quickly drop a link in the chat. Okay. So somebody else doing donors from internet at the moment, but I'll share the link. Okay. You can share the link. Okay. Link to the PR and you can see that in action. And All right. yeah, if you could like uh, start from the start because your voice was also breaking. Yep, uh, you can okay. I'll share two links. Yeah, uh, do you want to speak about like uh, uh, what thing are you work? Or I think we have to skip your update because um, you have a, a low bandwidth. We are not able to hear you. All right. One is for my okay. uh, So, like this, uh, text if there is a failure in hello. Uh, this PR adds another job to the building. Uh, okay. I think um, Vava is uh, switching networks. So, um, just for the uh, like uh, context of this PR. So whenever a job or a fail 
uh, is happen and email is uh, automatically sent to support at uh, layer five. So Vavo is working on uh, updating the job, uh, the workflow, GitHub workflow for that. And yep, we have Vavo back. Hello, so Vavo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, uh, I'm back. And yeah, you are clearly audible. Uh, yep. Okay. That, that's great. I'm so sorry for the trouble. Okay. So I worked on the build and release table workflow in machine. And there are a couple of jobs, like nine, 10 jobs there. And we want uh, GitHub Actions to uh, send us the email if there, if there is a failure in the release workflow. So I've added the, uh, a new job that will uh, look into the status or a conclusion for each workflow. And it will use GitHub REST API for Actions to fetch the details uh, about the workflow run. And from there, it will determine if the if any job has failed, and then it will uh, you know find out the uh, find out the step which has failed in that particular job and add it to the uh, to an environment variable, and uh, we'll repeat this for all the jobs in the workflow, and check how many have failed and add uh, the same you know uh, the failure details and a link to the job run in the environment variable and collectively this uh, environment variable that will then be uh, adding to the uh, email body mm -hmm. and that email will be sent to, to support at clf so this is about the email on failure job and i've shared two links and the later one uh, shows this in action it is on the es link job and you can uh, if you can just open field job summary step, like expand the field job summary step, you'll be able to see that uh, email board is showing runner PS link one and runner, uh, then it is uh, stating the step at which the job failed. And at the second line, there is a link to the job run. And you know, uh, then there is second job PS link two, both of which have failed. So, and to verify this, as you can see on the right hand, uh, left hand side of the screen, like there are three jobs in total, and the third, third one is actually checking about the status of other things. So this is how it works. And uh, about sending the email, I was not able to verify it on my uh, uh, PR, but it sends the email because the last time it was working fine. So I think. This is all about the email on failure Yeah. Do we have uh, any questions? This one uh, is also, <clears throat> sorry. This one is also a good topic to be discussed on the CI meeting too. Uh, that's uh, that held uh, bi-weekly on Thursdays. And uh, I remember somebody asked about the rate limiting of GitHub API. So, I looked into it and if we don't use authenticated request, the rate limit is around 60 requests per hour. So uh, we can say that one request per minute. And if we use authenticated uh, HTTP request, so it jumps to 1000 requests per hour. So I don't think we'll have any problem uh, even if we use un unauthenticated. Uh, and about uh, if we, you know, so somebody asked in the previous development meet that what if uh, one job skips off the like uh, jobs in the main context so i've added an if condition like if always and uh, it will take care that even if the jobs in the need sorry fails uh, this particular email on failure job will still run so apart from this do we have any questions all right yeah, any quick questions or comments or feedback for Weber? Mario might have one. All right. Um let's um uh, okay, I'll quickly share Weber's PR again in chat in case anybody has comments or feedback um, feel free to drop it over here in the pr comments all right okay um thanks above uh, do you have anything else 
and not for this reason. Okay. Um. All right. So next update is um from me. So if we go to over here, uh, layfi.io slash learn slash learning paths. So currently over here, we do have uh, learning paths for this service meshes. And we do have two courses available over here. And that too, again, includes uh, introduction to service mesh and advanced concept of service mesh. There will be uh, more courses that will be added over here in terms of cloud native and infrastructure and currently if you go to in any of these course um, there are uh, steps that are mentioned over here and that you can install locally and uh, run things but uh, now have uh, we now have the support for playground and mesh map so there is a call for volunteer for infuse all these um, uh, course and lab uh, with the mesh maps and with the meshy playground so you don't have to like uh, all these execute all these things manually over there in your system. So you could use a mesh map to run over all these um, items. Plus, uh, if you go to layfi.io slash learning paths, uh, sorry, layfi.io slash interactive labs. So all these labs are now uh, replaced with the support of Playground. So you can directly sign up to the Meshi Playground, use create a free account over there and uh, try out all these things. Plus, I'll make sure to get an issue um, created uh, for this if we don't have already. And okay, I hope uh, uh, anyone else. Um, okay, I'll quickly share the link of uh, Playground how you can sign up. So let's move to next item. That's from Rithik or Prem. So currently, when a new user comes in, comes to the mesh map, we show only we show some quick tips and the empty canvas. Uh, so user don't know what to do and how like what they can do on canvas. And for some user, it, it is annoying to you see uh, again again quick tips. So they don't uh, prefer quick tips. So like. So me and Priyam were working on a mock-up for creating something that will tell you the how, what they can do directly looking at the canvas. So Agara also helping. So this is how it looks like. So we are trying to keep it simple and telling like, to. So we are just showing two steps on what users can do and some tips. So. Like, well, so this is how it looks like in the dark, uh, light mode, and this is how it will look like in the dark mode. So, like when a user clicks a to the component from the component section and drops over the canvas, uh, all these steps will be removed. And when a user creates a new uh, design, so we will show that. Or if a user wants to skip these or enable or disable, we can. We are like, adding an option inside this by speed dial so that you can, can toggle between them. So, yeah, any feedback or comments on this? Um, Rex or uh, Rhoda might have. So over here, what uh, we are trying to achieve is uh, we are showing an uh, empty state that will allow users to uh, know what actions that they can perform. These empty state uh, will be non-interactive elements over the screen uh, with some text and descriptions. And I think Arithik will share the link of this. Sorry, video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Rex, uh, go ahead. I just wanted to find out who is speaking currently. I, I missed his um, observation, so I had to step out real quick. So oh, I'll okay. just chat him over on Slack and figure out. Yeah, Who was no. the person I'm, I'm trying to... Rithik is sharing an uh, empty state design for mesh map canvas. So he's uh, looking for feedback and over that. Okay. Rithik, oh, Rithik. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he'll share the link in uh, chat. So we can get the link and have comments. All right. Uh, and the second item from my side is like, whenever a user share a design, so like we send an email, so for the filters, 
Uh, now I have also created a template email template that could be shared when a user shares a filter from MeshMap. So this is uh, currently this is not in working because we need a function. So like uh, currently this is only a template. So like I guess three day tradition will be working on that creating that function. All right. Fridish is here. Okay, Fridish, you have any quick comments or on that thing? Mm, no, I think this would be. Okay, no. cool. Yeah. All right. So next up, we have a call for volunteers on docs from Vivek. Uh, God, I feel please. Oh, yes. Thanks. So this is like an instruction method for each installation method. So while installing and configuring my machine, there are like, you know, a need to install various components and dependencies. So let's say if we run into a problem where we need to start over again with the installation. So it will be, it would be helpful if we have an installation guides for, you know, different installation methods. So, so that we don't get any conflict. So I think this, this could be a good first issue where uh, any one of you on the call can pick a specific installation method and others can, you know, pick up other other ones. So if you're interested, I'll share the link in the chat quickly. You can comment down the GitHub and we'll see that it's assigned to you. All right. Pretty simple and good issue for docs. All right. So next up we have an update from Avishkar on fixing the organization count. So do you have a wish card on the call? Nope. So uh, we'll be skipping his update. So Gopi, uh, you're up next. Yes, I'm sharing my screen. So currently the badges said which uh, Vishala Vikram has shared before uh, has having this uh, UI, but later uh, we have changed the UI so that uh, the GitHub section will look uh, more clear here. So there is an open issue for anyone who's interested in making, uh, working with React or uh, changing the styles. Uh, anyone can pick this up and work on it. And if you have any other doubts, they can ping me on Slack. All right. Yeah, lots of good first issues and call for volunteers are being made on this call. So don't be shy. Um, feel free to comment on any of the issues or reach out to community managers or mission meet on Slack. Um, thanks, Gopi. I'll quickly share my screen again. So we have uh, two more items left. So Subedi is working on some of the failing SMP actions. So, so Vidi, uh, any quick words or anything on this? Yeah, uh, just a quick word uh, since the time is less. Uh, the LinkedD, the SMP actions for LinkedD is fixed. Like the, they are green marks everywhere. The Istio one is failing. Uh, and as discussed uh, like before, anyone volunteering to fix those would be really helpful. Uh, so since the time is less, anyone interested in working on these Failing SMP actions can ping me in the Slack and I'll discuss what, what the issue is and how it can be like solved and how, what steps we can we take to solve them. Yeah, yeah. that's it. And yeah, it would be uh, helpful if you could uh, share the link. Yeah, um, uh, chat, I'll just yeah. paste the links in the document. Minutes, yeah, all right, cool. All right. So Ni has joined for the first time on uh, this call and he has an up item, quick item. So Ni, okay. Would like to uh, share? Yep, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, can you stop share your screen so that I can see my Okay, yeah, um, give me one second. Uh, Okay, uh, can you all see, uh, see my screen right now? So yep. um, uh, I basically just like uh, did fix about a typo in here. Like uh, before that they have the S uh, in the uh, in the build world. I just like trying to uh, remove about uh, the S 
and now we have the build uh, right here. So I can go to like the issue on the GitHub. Um, let me see, but that's one real quick. Uh, okay, um, one second. Yeah, uh, right here. So this is the uh, my um, my bull request. All right. Yeah. Um, looks uh, good to me. Re ready to merge after I think the feedback from the reviewer is a lot. And yeah, there could be like uh, more typos, but uh, I don't think they should be in the project. So if anybody uh, finds more issues like this, uh, feel free to create a good first issue or make a PR. Okay, yes, so good. Okay, I'm gonna stop my stream right now. All right, um, thanks, Neen. Yep, no problem. Okay. All right, so we are two minutes uh, over. So it's time to wrap today's call. So uh, thanks all for joining today's call. Make sure you subscribe to the community calendar so you don't uh, miss out any of the weekly meetings. And um, this meeting is being live streamed on YouTube. So make sure you go and subscribe to the channel. And uh, in case you need any feedback, uh, take a quick screen recording or a video, add it on the pull request or add it on the pull request or share it on the discuss forum. And last but not the least, uh, this thing. So currently we are at uh, 2.9k stars for machinery. In case you haven't started the machinery repository yet, I'll quickly share the link in chat. Go and start the repository and share it with your friends and help five go vertical. And last thing is uh, uh, getting your first design published. So we now have uh, steps and uh, docs available on how you can publish your first design and get it into the machinery catalog. And uh, Yash also showed an update on um, publishing modal. So in case uh, you have any questions, feel free to uh, reach out on Slack or on Discuss Forum. Okay, I'll share the link again in chat. All right. So yeah, we had a good call today. So thanks all for joining. We'll meet uh, next week, same time, same place. Bye, everyone. Um, thanks for joining. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right, bye. Thank you so much. See you, guys.